What about learning how to see the project on a timeline? Learning how to cut, do dissolves, yeah. different things like that. Yeah, I've always said that. I think those are the two sort of bookends of being a great director is, and I mean a great director in the sense of being a director who is doing what the job says, which is direct. <laughs> in order to direct a movie to make sure it comes out the way you want it to, you have to understand cinematography, and on the other end, you have to understand editing. If you can understand those two things and do as much of that as you possibly can in the beginning, edit yourself. Um, then you will be able to direct an editor. You'll be able to say, no, that cut should come 10 frames later, and you'll be able to, you'll be able to guide an editor to, to in that all-important step of make, putting those images together in the way that you see them in your mind. Again, too many people, I think too many young filmmakers, even too many students go, well, I'm going to get an editing student to cut my film, my student film. And you're like, yeah, but not yet. Like, you cut it first. Cut it first. It may not be as great, it may not be as finessed as that editing student who is only thinking about that. But unless you get, again, familiar with putting two shots together and seeing what works and what doesn't work, you're never going to feel confident giving notes to an editor because you'll just, you'll be like how a lot of producers who are not savvy in that way are just going, well, just make it good. You know, let, I'm going to, now, when I wake up in the morning, there'll be an edit and it'll be a movie. But I don't know how it happened, but I just know, you know, it's like, it's like when you pick an auto, like, it's, it's, you don't want it to be like how I look at like an auto mechanic, which is just like, I want an auto mechanic who will just make the car work, and I don't want to know what the hell you did, just make it work. So many producers think that way. If you're a director and think that way, I think if you have this mindset that somebody else should do this work and you're not you're not clear on how it was accomplished, and I mean that by way of editing, then you're being willfully ignorant. And you're putting yourself at a disadvantage as a director because that doesn't, to me, a director has a real understanding, a working, a working knowledge of all the departments. He just doesn't, he doesn't sit there and, and, and hope that these, the cinematographer tells him what the shot should be. He shouldn't wait for the, costume designer to tell him what the, per, what the actor should wear or the production designer shouldn't say what, what color the walls are. You can interact with those people, and, but you need to guide them and say, this is, what I'm, this is what I'm thinking of. Here's a storyboard. This is what I'm thinking of. This is the kind of jacket I want this. I'm not sure if it should be this pattern, but this is the, from this period is what I'm thinking of. Because then you set these very talented people uh, on a path and they can build on that. But if you don't give them those those, those sort of uh, foundational elements or information, then other people start inventing your movie for you. And then you just sit back and go, yeah, I kind of like that. Oh, no, I don't like that. And a lot of movies get made that way. <laughs> you know? A lot of movies get made that way. But they don't have that distinctive mark. That's why certain films, you'll see a certain film, you'll see a Kubrick movie, and you know that he picked that ashtray. You know, the one that's like, way in the background, you know, that you're out of focus. You know that not only did he pick that ashtray, but he moved it two inches to the left just to make sure that the image was exact. You know, that's the difference. You know, I think you feel that difference, too. Do you remember editing your first project? Yeah. How was that? Was this, you were splicing or no? Yeah, splicing, yeah. The, when I was editing, well, I mean, I was, when I was in film school, it was a lot easier to cut silent 16 millimeter footage because then you were just really just dealing with, you know, just the picture element. And yes, you had to cut that, you know, cut that with a Revis splicer and you had to use tape splicing and you put it up on a flat bed. It was certainly a more time consuming process. And when you when we moved into sound it was more complicated because but still the same thing because you're dealing with a separate sound element on mag and you have to make sure that's kept in sync and it's harder if you want overlapping dialogue or anything. You can't just split it up on audio channel one and two, now you've got to like, you've got to thread up a whole new uh, piece of mag and it's a whole other thing, but it was more time consuming. But what it did teach you was to be um, thoughtful in your editing because it was such a pain in the ass to undo it. So like when you made the cut, you were thinking about, yeah, this, yeah, should it be here, should it be here, here. Like you made, really made a thoughtful edit because if you threaded it up and you looked at it and it was wrong, then it was a whole laborious process of untaping your picture, untaping your sound, finding those five frames that are now hanging on a trim bin, 
cut those in, you know, like it was just like a long. So what it did, I think it taught a lot of editors to be more of a thinking because the, Im the, the uh, result of a bad or a thoughtless edit was just took more time. Uh, of course, now the consequences of making a bad edit are easily, you just undo, you know, you just hit undo and you're, it's easy. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was like anything. I mean, editing was like a, a bungly, you know, technical, like, how do we do this? How do we keep it in sync? How, all the things that happen now. But again, with familiarity comes an ease, and then you don't have to worry so much about the technical part of it. All you're worried about, all you're thinking about is how, how to make the best creative choice. And I think that's true of anything. I mean, it must be true of learning a musical instrument. You know, when you're learning a musical instrument, you're just, you know, or you're just trying to read music. You're just trying to, you know, hit the right key that means, and then later it's like language. You're fluent in it. You don't think about it as much anymore. So I think it's important to do it yourself to get over that fear and become fluent in the language, and then, then you can direct, you know.